Assalamualaikum students. <clears throat> this is uh, Shahzad Shamshad, and uh, this is your unit 2.1, communication skills. Uh, the entire unit two will talk about uh, verbal skills, non-verbal skills, barriers to communication, and effective listening skills. So it consists of uh, four units. This is the unit one. We are going to talk about the verbal skills. What are the elements? And uh, what are the different ways of uh, communicating through verbal skills? So let me go into the slide sharing first. Uh, there we are. Okay. So I'll keep myself here in the corner so that you don't have to see my face a lot. <coughs> okay. Verbal means use of words it is opposite to non-verbal where we do not use words so uh, obviously the main uh, mode of communication is verbal communication where we use words to communicate but there are many ways now which have been devised to use words for a certain type of communication and uh, in, in that particular situation to make an impact. And that is why if you have an idea, if you read a newspaper, what is different from a novel, for example? When you read a novel, you read fiction, somehow the use of words is different from the use of words in a news piece, whether it's, it's a newspaper or you listen to the news. Do you find a feel a difference between how the words are used in these two forms of communication that I've quoted to you. So this is what we will see that the different situations and in different situations, certain arrangement of words is used because communication in that area <clears throat> uh, will be made more effective through the use of those words. Okay. So going on basic definitions first what is verbal communication i will use as words to communicate ideas across to the audience uh, verbal communication uses both spoken and written types of communication uh, however generally the term is used to refer to oral communication which may be a misnomer and verbal means use of words, whether it's in the oral form or the written form, technically. Let's see. What are the elements? You have words. Fine. But then you develop a certain arrangement of words to make a sentence. There are many types of sentences sure you must have uh, studied the types of sentences in your functional English. Uh, sentences are basic sentences are a, a joining of two clauses. If you remember, we use conjunctions to join clauses to make a sentence. There's a simple sentence. There's a compound sentence. There's a complex sentence. So once again, your basic bricks are the words. Then it 
totally depends on you and your expertise of how to form sentences and this becomes very very important in uh, communication forming the sentences this is a skill which you need to develop or learn and how do you do it you do it by reading great if not great at least good authors so read and observe and learn how sentences are formed to communicate a meaning across depending on what is your purpose of communication uh, literal and figurative meanings now this is literal is very simple that whatever is expressed by the words in a sentence according to the dictionary meaning but then we have another genre figurative meaning where we use similes uh, metaphors for example denotations and connotations i'll give you a few examples a figurative first we'll take an example of a simile okay where we say my friend is as strong as a bull now this is a simile and in certain uh, to use it sometimes actually makes the meaning stronger and your reader because the moment you mention a bull the richness of the meaning increases and there's a higher chance that your audience will remember the bull imagery that you used okay then figurative meaning uh, another genre as as a another type metaphors similar to a simile but it's it you don't you do not say he is my friend is as strong as a bull but you use some quality of the bull okay you may say that uh, he got angry and he charged at me now who charges okay usually a bull charges but see the difference it depends uh, first sorry first what have you done you have used the a quality of a bull without saying that your friend is like a bull and you expect that your audience knows and understand that when you use the word charge for a human so their intellect intellectual capacity would be such that they will understand that you are actually referring to the charge of a bull so keeping it simple you know if your you know your audience will understand your metaphors you can use metaphors he roared very loud this is a metaphor you didn't you didn't even say lion but you expect that when you use the word roar roar lion roars however if you think that your audience needs to be you know made to understand that you're using the lion image you can use the simile he roared like a lion that becomes a simile so these are a few examples of the figurative meanings and using a uh, figurative speech definitely makes your communication richer it makes it more graphic but then please understand that we do not use a lot of uh, figurative meaning in business communication yeah it is used more in fiction uh, maybe in journalistic writing also so that is what 
I meant when we said that we need to have that skill to understand what kinds of words uh, should we use and that totally depends on your purpose of communication and your uh, audience okay then quickly denotations again the meaning of a word that is given in the dictionary the literal meaning however connotation the last sorry the last term here connotation means that it is the same word but it has somewhat a different meaning for a particular audience and in a particular situation to give you an example with which you will relate to <laughs> if i curse someone with whom i have a very formal relationship or a stranger what's going to happen i will offend that uh, gentleman or lady whatever but amongst friends what happens you guys that's what i said you will relate to it you meet a friend and you you know you curse him and you you, you can maybe abuse him also does he get offended no for him because of your relationship the connotation of those foul words changes so when two people two friends meet after a long time and uh, you know they they blaming each other for not meeting the other person what do we do ye badi badi galiyan dete kuch nahi ladai hoti nahi hoti ye connotative meaning hai acha dusra it can also be uh, that if by a certain word a certain memory or a certain association is awakened in your audience the literal meaning of the word goes into the background and the connotational meaning becomes more highlighted okay uh if you know i have maybe uh, an event in my life which is uh, which may be a positive event or a negative event doesn't matter but a certain word triggers the memory of that event or that experience so the actual the denotative meaning of the word there goes in the background and the connotative meaning is more uh highlighted okay okay collocations the term in the center collocation means uh, all kinds of proverbs that we use okay uh, i'm actually forgetting the term that we use in basic english for these terms it's a group of words two or three words it's a small phrase but the two or three words in that phrase standing alone have their own meaning but when they come together they mean something else for example uh to make up my bed what does it actually mean i'm a carpenter and i'm making a bed but no it only means that uh, you know straightening out the sheets and the pillows and that is what is making one's bed this is a collocation so all kinds of these uh, two or three word phrases okay to look into the matter for example to look in look into the matter to look look into is a collocation because together these two three words they have a different meaning okay when they come together as compared to what they would mean uh, separately okay uh then formal informal 
set of words, formal and informal. Uh, you need to be aware of these differences because you need to know in certain situations you have to use a formal language, you have to use the informal language. Informal language is uh, the language which we use amongst uh, where relationships are closer, there are lesser formalities. So what happens? Friend comes in, I say, hey, this is informal. But when the relationship is formal, we would say, good morning. So this is the difference. And slang words, the ones that are not available in dictionary. And you know better than me, all kinds of slang words that uh, you guys use in Urdu. Usko topi pehna di. Or ye is tarah ke aur hain jo mein abhi bol nahi sakta. This is slang. But it's very interesting that, especially in English, okay, uh, a lot of slang words when they, are become, when they are used very commonly, then ultimately they are included in the dictionary. So, you know, it's very interesting the evolution of the lexicon, as we say, the, the words in the dictionary is actually propelled uh, by the use of slang. A lot of words today that are officially accepted and they, uh, they are there in the dictionaries were actually at one time a slang word. What we need to understand here is these three sets of words, formal, informal, and slang words, there's no harm in using them, but we have to be very careful that they should be used according to your relationship with the audience. Okay, so that was about uh, the elements of verbal communication. Uh, Okay, strategies for improving verbal communication skills. A lot of them I've already been discussing. Use clear and precise language, which means generally do not use connotative words, use denotative words, which carry a clear dictionary meaning for your audience, okay? As I said, we only use the figurative speech, whether it's simile, it's metaphor, or the connotations. Uh, when we are sure that our audience will understand. So out of these certain circles, these closed circles, please do not use the figurative speech. Use literal speech which will help you to express your meaning very clearly. Use precise words. And he, again, this I've already been talking about. Use vocabulary according to the level of your listener. Remember, in communication, our objective is to communicate. To make the meaning here in our brain understood by the receiver. So always keep that objective in mind and use the vocabulary accordingly. Doesn't it happen in our personal life that when we are talking or communicating with a little child, we by default go to a certain mode where we use words which he will understand. Okay? Although our nonverbal also changes there, our tone of voice also becomes very, you know, childlike so that he can be comfortable with you or using jargon jargon what is jargon jargon is a certain vocabulary which is akin to a certain profession okay so it's very interesting when uh, three or four doctors for example when they are uh, talking amongst each other 
and if they are talking about diseases and medicines and all a non doctor will not understand anything because they will be using certain technical terms this is jargon okay so it all depends here we have been told to avoid use of jargon yes if you know that your audience belongs to a different field and he will not understand the particular words that only have a meaning in your field don't use them please now use inclusive language again it's again very close to jargon uh when we uh, how, how do i make you understand this the opposite of inclusive inclusive is exclusive okay so we baat aa gayi jargon wali ke exclusive vocabulary don't use it because people will not understand inclusive means use general vocabulary which includes the general words no oh, use non offensive language which is you know i don't need to explain anything here don't offend people please whether it's through your sarcastic humor or teasing people that is what it means okay remember this acronym acronym is h a i l hail hail is the acronym where every letter stands for a guideline hail means be honest in your communication be clear be straight the opposite of being clear and straight is what we call euphemism okay guma phira ke baat karna authenticity be yourself be who you are please don't try to pretend or fake integrity be your word love wish your listeners well they should feel that you care for them you are sincere to them so that was all about the basics of verbal communication what you really need to carry from here are two three very important points use simple language use language which everybody will understand we can use figurative language only in certain situations where we are sure that the other person will understand and i think this acronym really really will help you a lot if you start actually practicing these four principles so this was your verbal communication then we have three more units in this week which are uh, again available for you so i hope and i'm sure that this will help you understand the basics of the uh, concepts here thank you very much take care bye bye